Let's drink. Hello, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch part 3 of NES games that should have had sequels on the Super Nintendo. I was a kid that went straight from the Atari 2600 to the Super Nintendo when it came out in 1991. Sure, I played the NES at a friend's house here and there, but for the most part, I only got to know the catalog through the Super Nintendo. Like for example, I played Contra 3 before I ever played Contra, and I played Super Castlevania 4 before I played Castlevania. It was the later games that made me want to seek out the earlier games. So, as a result of that, there's a bunch of standalone alone NES games that never got any sort of follow-up or continuation on the Super Nintendo that I never got into until much later on, so this series of videos is a way to get to know a few of those games. In the past, I've talked about stuff like Crystallis, Metal Storm, Zen Intergalactic Ninja, and weird stuff like Stanley the Search for Dr. Livingston. But first, I want to mention a more popular game, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for NES. Or maybe popular is not the right word, more like infamous. This is one of those games that's got some fantastic ideas, like being able to switch between four playable characters in the middle of gameplay, and having a world map that allows the game to be approached like something out of the adventure genre. But the game is hampered by some serious problems. There is wonky jumping, wonky enemy design, wonky hitboxes, and wonky difficulty. It's just a big bag of wonk. The series ended up going in another direction entirely into the beat-em-up genre, and yeah, that was clearly the right thing to do. I mean, Turtles in Time is my pick for the best beat-em-up ever made. But if the Super Nintendo got a follow-up for the first Ninja Turtles game, it's an interesting thought experiment. Maybe use the shoulder buttons to flip between characters instead of a pause menu, and maybe, you know, not have whatever these things are as enemies? I do like the first Ninja Turtles game on paper, but it absolutely needed a bit more polish that a direct sequel could have potentially added. Thanks to Working Player 53 for this idea. Here's an interesting game called Destiny of an Emperor, and it was Capcom's foray into strategy role-playing games. You play as Liu Bei, who has to defend his village along with his friends Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, fighting an uprising from the Yellow Turban Rebels. If this sounds familiar to anyone, it's because it's based on the manga Tenchi wo Kurao, which itself is loosely based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novels. Now, this game may look like a Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy clone, but the combat here is handled differently. Each battle has you control up to five generals that each command their own massive army, with the number there representing the number of soldiers, which function as your hit points here. Instead of magic, you use tactics where you consult a strategist who can restore your own forces or execute a special attack that depletes enemy forces. I'm only scratching the surface of this one. There's a lot to this game, and I wanted to bring it up because the Super Nintendo games that North America got that were based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms books were incredibly slow-paced with clunky, unintuitive user interfaces. So, seeing a game like Destiny of an Emperor on the Super Nintendo would have really been a huge upgrade compared to those games. And yeah, I know this game did get a sequel, but it was for the Famicom and it stayed in Japan. I'm only saying, as good as the NES games are, the Super Nintendo could have expanded on the combat system even further, and it would have been a great alternative to the clunky Koei strategy games. Here's another more popular game in Rygar. It's a solid action-adventure title that switches between 2D side-scrolling and a top-down viewpoint, with some RPG elements here with the ability to level up. And this is a case of a game where I just want to see more of the Rygar world. There's plenty of lore here to expand upon, what with Rygar being an undead warrior and all, searching for gods that grant him items. Plus, the soundtrack to this game is freaking great. It reminds me a bit of Actraiser. I'd imagine Rygar would sound a little similar to that on the Super Nintendo. And of course, a Super Nintendo follow up would also address the biggest flaw of the NES version of Rygar. There was no battery save and no password system. Ugh! A potential SNES edition would have definitely rectified that, at the very least. Sticking with 8-bit arcade ports, there's Astienex... Astia... How do you pronounce this title, anyway? Let's check the commercial. 12 exciting levels of play. Astienex for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now that's some quality 80s production right there. A Styanax is a pretty solid action platformer, even though that title makes it sound like a prescription medication. The look and feel of this game reminds me a little bit of the Legendary Axe games for TurboGrafx-16, but the thing is, A Styanax is a game that desperately needs more polish. It's got good qualities, the settings and backgrounds look great, the cutscenes feature some great pixel art, and the music is pretty dang good too, but the gameplay is just a bit sluggish, the enemy patterns are downright annoying, and the game is so intensely flickery, even for an NES game. The nuts and bolts of a solid game are here though, and a Super Nintendo follow-up would have given this game the polish it needed. 
Demon Sword, a 1990 game made by the same people who brought you Toxic Crusaders and Pinball Quest, is a game that does not waste any time getting going. You press start and immediately you're dropped into this jungle, you press up on the d-pad, and holy crap what the hell is even happening? You're zipping around treetops battling enemies with shurikens and your sword. It's like an 8-bit version of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon. Still, this game feels almost too out of control, and as you continue to play through this one, it's clear the level design doesn't always match your insane abilities, which is a shame. Plus, it doesn't help that your sword attack is pretty weak. I can't help but feel like a Super Nintendo follow-up would have built on this game even further, providing larger levels and even more interesting enemy designs. The closest we got to a game like this on the SNES was Skyblazer, a good game in its own right, but a Demon Sword follow-up could have potentially topped that. Next, there's Worm Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's a story-driven game that sees you piloting a crazy, overpowered ship that can drill through whatever gets in its way, and it can also fly and shoot whatever these things are. Eventually, you come to a boss fight where the perspective switches to a first-person shooter. But what's goofy about this part is that you, uh, have to ask your crew about what to do? Yeah, you can't just fire at will. You have to increase your possibility meter first by talking to your shipmates. Sure, okay. As you continue to progress through the game, fuel management becomes a major factor as well, as you have to alternate between flying and roving around on the ground, having to shoot enemies to keep your fuel tank filled. This is a majorly ambitious game that combines horizontal, vertical, and first-person shooter perspectives that also has you try and manage a few different factors as well. It's a pretty fun game as is, so this is just a case where a Super Nintendo sequel or remake could have given this game even more possibilities to play around with. The Cryon Conquest was developed by Vic Tokai, but I don't blame you if you thought this was some sort of Capcom Mega Man spin-off of some kind because jeez louise this game is shameless and how closely it replicates all things Mega Man. There's your main character sprite animations and their range of motion, there's different weapons you switch between, there's rush style helper things, jeez even the death animation is a straight ripoff. But you know what? I'm totally fine with that, I love Mega Man, and while this isn't nearly as good as the real thing, the controls are definitely an issue, I still enjoy playing the Cryon Conquest to the point that I think it should have gotten a follow-up of some kind, preferably on the Super Nintendo. I mean, think of the Leap X made from the original series, Vic Tokai totally could have kept ripping off that series and made Cryon Quest Z or something, and I absolutely would have eaten it up. Last, here's one I've been interested in for years, ever since I first saw it in Nintendo Power, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. It just looked so bizarre to me as a kid. You play as Sir Cucumber, who along with Percy the Persimmon has to go rescue Princess Tomato from the evil Minister Pumpkin. The gameplay itself is like an old PC text adventure, only instead of typing, you have a long list of commands you can choose from that you scroll through using the D-pad. The main reasons I would have wanted to see a Super Nintendo follow-up to Princess Tomato are because, well, this game is so freaking weird, and because this format would have made great use of the Super Nintendo mouse. Or hell, let's make it even weirder and make it compatible with the Super Scope, blasting random vegetables off the screen Battle Clash style, hell yeah! But yeah, this is just another bizarre, ambitious title that needed more space for all its ideas, and the SNES would have accommodated that just fine. Alright, that's all for now, and I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!